Yeah. Oh no, my remote. G'day, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. So today we are looking at the Flysky GT5. I got one of these so I could have a one-handed remote and I wanted to get something uh, nice and sort of entry level because, uh, but with some features, um, because, well, you know, kind of want it to be disposable. Um, and in order to sort of prolong that, uh, I want to weatherproof it. So I don't want it to be like disposable throwaway, but uh, I want it to be um, something I don't care about if it gets completely destroyed, but I want it to last. More apt. Anyway, as you can see, I've already been designing something up here and I've got a TPU steering extender here so I can film one-handed with it. Um, briefly, uh, I uh, have checked it all works and whatnot and I advise you to do the same if you're ever gonna modify anything. Um, check it works before you do that and document it. Now, um, if you wanna see an unboxing video for this, I can go through that. It does come with one remote, uh, one receiver, sorry. Um, and that uh, needs waterproofing as well, and I'm gonna cover that in a separate video to sort of save some time here. Um, anything I can really say about this now, it's a pretty simple remote. The design's pretty good in terms of taking it apart and putting it back together. Uh, we are gonna go through that in detail on the bench, but um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward and not too fiddly as far as these things go. Um, apart from that, nothing much more to add, so, uh, Let's get to the bench, pull this thing apart, and do some weatherproofing. Okay, so we'll turn this over. We may have to take the wheel off, but we'll get to that if we need to. Um, what we're gonna have to do first is take out the little rubber thing with jiggers. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And we'll also need to take off this grip here because there are some, uh, I think at least one screw under here, there might be two. Uh, you'll need to take the batteries out and take your battery plate off because that looks like it uh, is separate from this uh, left-hand side of the controller. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna get into that. Now, just uh, quickly, I'm not sure how you're meant to get these things out, but I uh, just use a tweezer to poke on in and get them out. There's a clip there, a clip there, and a clip at the bottom. And then remove it from the other side. Put all that to the side. And then we have to remove all these screws. So I'll go through that and come back. Okie dokie. So when you've gotten all of these out, you can Grab it, and it should just come easily apart. A little bit of teasing. You just gotta push the surface, not that wall, and it'll come off. And then that is your casing that you can put to one side. There's a little rubbery bit here. And take note that it clips in to the, uh, whoop, see, so it just clips over that. And just take it out and put it to one side. Now you've got this. So here we've got the trigger mechanism and your um, your buttons on this side. So all of these are on this board, this daughter board here, which wires up into this plug. So it appears that this rotary dial is on a separate board that's sort of offset and it plugs in there. Um, the screen is screwed onto, I'm not sure how it's wired up yet, but the screen is screwed onto the main motherboard and the RF seems to be on here too. Yeah, so it does appear that that's loose, this top section. Um, I'm not getting that out without pulling on the UFL here. So I wanna undo all of this. Um, I might end up taking the wiring out of, for the power harness out of these clips just for now. I'm not sure if I'll have to undo this or just take off that. I probably will take off the daughterboard to um, at least apply some sort of waterproofing. 
Uh, now, to uh, talk about what is waterproofable and what isn't, there are a number of things on this that you, you really can't protect that well. For instance, switches, rotary dials, rotary encoders. Um, this is going to be impossible. Uh, if the edge of the screen isn't sealed, we'll protect that, but we can't cover the do the do the face of the screen and without a, doing a protective coating, you know, like a for a phone or something like that, a screen protector. Um, and there will be some stuff on here, like the switches and dials. So, like I said, this this is really only a weather proofing. Um, but it's going to be one of those things that's reassuring, uh, you know, having gone through this, also learning about your remote, but uh, knowing, you know, that you're not immediately going to have to run away and stop having a good time when uh, it starts to drizzle or something like that. All right, so let's um, remove this. What is that rattle? Another tip is to get multiple magnets and put your screws at different sizes in them. I think I might have lost a little washer in there somewhere. Is there a washer on this? There is. Wait, hold. No, it doesn't appear so. Good. So that should come loose. Excellent. It might be best policy just to remove this UFL. Pop it off nice and gentle, straight up. And that can sit there out of the way. Probably could have just done that and left the uh, aerial attached. Because now I've got the nightmare of getting it back. Yay! Figure that out later. Definitely is attachment down the back here. So I think this whole assembly has to come out. I'm not sure if I have to actually remove this bar and the trigger. I think I might be able to literally just take out one, two, and three screws there. And that should um, loosen this up. Okay, so there you have it. So you, your uh, steering channel is plugged in here. Throttle channel plugged in here. Again, just, just, just potentiometer. Not too easy to waterproof. You can do like electrical grease, which will help, but like, you know, that's just not um, go into that whole rigmarole. Also, I think it's a, you know, one piece unit. So yeah, yeah, you might just be replacing these periodically if uh, you have a controller that long. But this is why I have a cheap controller here because it's, you know, it's gonna be for um, those situations. Okay, so that's your uh, throttle module there and steering module. And now all you gotta do is take this out and we should be able to get the whole thing and pull it away from the casing. Okay, so this daughter board here, just here, has a button here that you're gonna have to remove also seem to have dropped my channel 3 button right there somewhere I believe it's inside um, and I did that by going under and just getting right to the base of it and levering up and it just come out like that so be careful of the buttons when you do remove that oh and there you go all but the wiring for the power has come out and all my buttons have fallen out Woo! Great. now you'll have to remove a bit of this from here so just pull it through the clips and again and you may or may not want to do the bottom one I think I'm going to you'll have to do them one at a time because these are not twisted here beautiful so we have it out now I'm going to get all my lovely buttons so there's the buttons from the top there's the buttons from the uh, daughter board and put them in here And we can turn this over. And have a look. So this is obviously the back of the board. 
essentially. I think what we're going to do is grab a quick photo with the uh, camera. Okay, so on the uh, this little daughter board in the grip, you can see there's the haptic motor there, the little haptic engine that spins its little weight. Um, there's a lot of buttons, uh, three buttons and a uh, three positioning rotary uh, uh, encoder kind of thing or switch. Um, now you can't really do the buttons because they're going to get gummed up, nor with the motor. The motor doesn't care so much and you can't do that. Uh, you could do this, you could seal that in there provided you're not planning to ever take it out. Uh, but you can also, uh, but what you can do is the uh, electronics here and here, just sort of give them a coat with a conformal coating and protect them a, uh, for a bit longer. Apart from that, not really much to be done on this board here. So, on the steering. Once again, there's very little that you can do to protect this. Um, I mean, if you wanted, you could give it a coat of uh, lacquer, but if you get it inside there, it's going to have issues and gum up your sensor, so you're probably best just leaving that. And the same deal for your throttle. So if we take these out and unscrew the uh, screen, we should be able to have a look at the working side of the board. I will get that done. All right, so I managed to get this daughter board out here. You're gonna have to be quite careful pulling this out of there. It's quite a long, flat plug, and you might need to get the tweezers and just gently lift this side, and then lift this side, and then lift this side, and work it free. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. And you see here, there is plastic stands. Oh God, get in there, come on. So these screws here are actually incredibly tight, like really tight. I'll have to work, get them off. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, so I got that out of there finally. And these buttons will come off, these bottom ones here will come off as you lift this. Those just rest and uh, this one you pull off with that. And these top ones here, these rotary dials, these knobs, they have to be pulled off before you lift that plate. So you basically want to pull these off and then the plate should be free at the front and then you come to the back and pull it up and it'll take these off here and that will come out. Careful you don't lose them. So here we go. Here is the motherboard. So, on the back you can see that it's uh, not really got much, just a lot of testing points, uh, the plug-in points, a power, uh, a buzzer, and the radio transmitting circuitry, I'd imagine, on a separate board, like another daughter board, soldered directly onto the motherboard. You can also see the four screws that hold on the screen. And we are on the other side. So, uh, the screen has a... Um, a ribbon cable, as you can see there, and is attached by these four plastic points. Um, here you can see there is some ancillary circuitry, uh, the power, you know, on off and whatnot. Um, uh, you know, I'm not really like an electrical engineer, but you know, the most important stuff's underneath that screen there. So let's have a look under the screen. So when you're undoing it, just put your finger on the back and that'll help keep the uh, strength on it. Not on the screen itself, on the back of where the, um, the plastic support, where the screw goes through. They're quite stiff, so don't strip the screws and get metal shavings everywhere. Because you're going to have a bad time.
Okay, so there's our screen. Now, if we bring that up and over, you can see that there is a ribbon cable that connects that to the body of the uh, motherboard, right there. And we have our ARM manufactured, our ARM designed main processor. Um, a little bit of white dot on it for some reason, uh, signifying something. Uh, looks like a uh, another choke, maybe a variable resistor, in hindsight, uh, from the other analysis of the receivers, uh, which is coming out after this, sorry, that's going to hurt the brain. Um, but as you can see, there is a lot of um, filtration hardware, well, that looks unpopulated for the most part. Uh, but here is the main waterproofing area of this device. Again, switches, no go. Uh, this is probably sealed? I don't know. From my reading up on um, from my reading up of uh, the design of like the, uh, the, the screens when I was just trying to check out what it meant with permeable uh, the um, they, they should be waterproof at the front and rear, uh, but it's the sides where water can creep in and damage the L LED, L LCD. So I'm going to put some conformal coating along the uh, sides. You can see that the bottom here looks quite well sealed up along there. There's some conformal coating around the rim of this thing just to stop water creeping in it's probably a good idea now to remove the screen okay so do these shoulders move yes they do ah there's our clamping mechanism there we go bingo is free okay so now we have our screen so we can put that gently to one side and here is our motherboard basically knackered all right so now i'm going to uh probably just do it resting here because it's such a big board maybe a piece of blue tack Basically, I'm going to conformal coat all of uh, this and the back. Although, I was thinking that maybe I could use circuit board lacquer. Um, it might be easier, although it's a lot more messy and I've got a ribbon cable to avoid. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten switches uh yeah so i'm thinking maybe you know maybe maybe i just go with the conformal and lump the expense uh, before i begin one thing i'm going to do is take a lesson from life and i'm going to only waterproof the perimeter of this main chip to facilitate in um in it in its uh self-cooling or not inhibit its cooling ability. Anyway, right, hop two. Oh, you fucking muppet. Sorry, I... Lack of fucking sleep. I do apologize, I wasn't filming with this camera. <laughs> At least we've got this one to back it up. All right, let's keep going.
Now who noticed what just happened there? I almost dropped some uh, of the goop in uh, either in a bad spot, one of these two spots, or here. It would be very bad. So uh, finally, just want to check around that chip. Make sure all corners of that MCU are sealed up. And that's good to go. So now we wait for that to dry. And we can come back and do whatever we want to the other side, which is probably not much. For now, I'm just going to put that over here and grab out the daughterboard. So here we go, is a little daughterboard. And I'm really just going to be doing these two little resistors, as well as this little clump here. And that's that. Whoa. Come on, that was sloppy. I thought the lid was uh, tied up. Way too tired to be doing things. Way too tired for things. This is probably just the switching mechanism circuitry for this motor. And there'll be a sig signal sent to it from the board. So we can put that to one side to dry it. Now we have the screen. Okay, so you can see here the side of that screen. Now there are gonna be gaps. Now my camera battery's running out, so unfortunately. There are gonna be gaps just like along this seam and possibly along there, that seam. So I wanna go around and conformal coat those those two seams. All going well, but I'd like to bring this to your attention. Well, you know what they say, no rest for the wicked. My question is, what do they ever do? <laughs> anyway, no, sorry if I look uh, absolutely uh, ratchet tired. I am, again, no sleep, uh, but things must go on. And also, I have to work very early in the morning too. So here we are, we've gotten this done, as you can see. And I wanted to show you something. So first things first, you can see I've conformal coated this box here, um, this, this can, and not really much on the else on the back side. And that's because there's not really any circuitry back here. And I've had a close look at this board. I can't even see a resistor on this thing. So I think it's just a pass through board. Now, uh, the point that I want to make is that this can is vented and is therefore extremely difficult to make waterproof. However, I've still gone around it um, and uh, basically if you've got a vented can like this, a vented area, space, there's only got one, you know, as, as it heats up, you're going to build pressure and break your vent. Uh, and break your seal um, unless it's a really good seal so I'm pretty sure that these uh, that you know we're not we're not waterproofing this thing and using it in the water of course that would be kind of hard because you know um, water absorbing uh, 2.4 gigahertz really well okay so here is the other side of the board and as you can see I've conformal coated all the circuitry on it now I've done around the chip here this board should be you know, at least protected from the elements to some degree. Uh, yeah, pretty well. Now I've done this as well. You can see that there. Again, just the circuitry on the board. And that's pretty well it. Now I want to go and have a closer look at the screen before I reassemble all this. Because really it's, it's these edges, let me get a good, we can get this in focus. Okay, that seems like a nice sharp focus. So there's these edges that you've got to seal up. Now I've gone over and made sure the sides are done, but I'll get this in focus again. You may or may not be able to see here that it doesn't seem like I've got a great seal going there. So I'm going to do that again. And really you want to have it fluoresce. Like a nice solid fluoresce like that. There's Coco barking at a, uh, I know Coco's a terrible name, I'll call him Chill. 
Hey, Chu, Chu. <laughs> All right, I better wrap this scene up. Um, it, yeah, so you want to have a nice good seal around those uh, edges where these materials join, the backlight and the LCD and all that, and the screen cover and the, and the actual screen, um, to ensure uh, the water cannot ingress. Because if water can come in from the sides, it'll get in there and it'll mess your screen right up. So that's that. Now, what I've got to do is reassemble it. So um, basically, I mean, that's the reverse of, uh, you know, taking it apart. And that's why I have taken a video of it. And really, if you're doing this kind of thing, just put a camera on it and get that footage or take some photos with your phone uh, as you go along. That can be a great help if you're teaching yourself to take apart stuff and fix it up or do whatever you want with it. Um, keeping a little bit of documentation is a really good idea and photos and video are the easiest thing to do, really. Um, so, yeah. All right, so, yes, like I said, I gotta put this back together. But before I do, um, because I'll put this back together and if I counted any problems, I'll include them. Otherwise, we'll just go out and give it a go um, and see if it works. Before I do though, uh, is it this? So this is uh, for the, goes on the wheel. I just designed this last night um, and it's to allow the wheel to extend to my thumb like so, uh, so I can so I can manipulate it, you know, with one hand. And I'm gonna make a link to this uh, available down below and you can just pick it up. It'll probably be, I'll try Thingiverse again, but if that doesn't work, it'll be a Google Drive link. Um, yeah, so there you go, enjoy. Um, right, let's put this back together. So first things first is to put the screen back on. Now the screen came off this way. Oh wait, actually first things first. I gotta reseal that. And it will not stand up that way. Um, one tip while you're putting these things together is just double check. Oh my God, really? I, I just had you working. Double check you've got no conformal coating on like the back of these strips. As you can see, there's no fluorescing there. If you do, um, you wanna get some like isopropyl alcohol or some of the circuit board cleaner and a toothbrush and scrub like you are brushing the teeth of a baby bird. All right, so I've uh, got to let this top dry and then we're gonna come back and stick this all back together. And I am actually going to include the uh, putting the screen's uh, ribbon cable back in, clipping that down and fastening down the screen um, as that is a very delicate part and um, I just want to show you how I'm going to do it. All right, so uh, everything's dried, ready to go back together. Now, a couple of points to cover just quickly on um, uh, putting it back together. Uh, just notice that these two buttons up here on two are keyed, as you can see here and here. Um, and that's probably just about it. This little rocker button goes in the cradle here and that button fits in there. They're all sort of shaped uh, uniquely for each hole individually. Uh, so that is quite a nice little uh, touch by the designers. And don't forget to put that back on. All right. Now, that was kind of premature to do that, but I uh, was just waiting for the stuff to dry. So I put that to the side. Careful not to knock it. Now it's time to put this back on. So here we are. Now you want to take the screen, which sits like that, put it in that flipped over position, and this wants to go into that hole there. And it should more or less just like literally fall in. If you want to make sure it's home, become multi dexterous. Battery's charged. I'm going to take the old Cine, Cine Queen for a flight and just make sure that's sitting home. Seems good. So bring your hand up, hold it in place, and push down the fastening mechanism to fasten it. 
and then finally just come on both sides of that mechanism and make sure it's secured. And so that is how you want to put in a ribbon cable. You do not want to force a ribbon cable, just be super gentle. They're designed generally just to gently go in, like with very minimum force. And uh, anyone designing plugs with ribbon cables that uh, doesn't design like that is spawn of the devil. Right, so now all we need to do is put that screen back on. Okay, so now we've got that screen there, let's put this all back together. So gently bring that over the top, place it in position like so. Inspect why it's rocking. I guess that's just the tight fit. Yeah, it's, it's got, it's got plastic that sort of goes through the PCB and sits quite tight and actually holds it on there anyway. But do be careful not to have it drop off and pull on that ribbon cable. So then we want to go back systematically, get our screws and put them in. Now for this, I would advise that you, you get the board, bring it over in your hands and rest it, rest the columns here your fingers on the back of those and then because it's really they're really tight holes and just gently try not to bend the board or damage anything bring that screw home it helps to rest your back back your hand on something Now if you're finding that your uh, Phillips head is slipping a lot, just make sure it's properly aligned with the screw. That can be a thing. All right, now number four is gonna be kind of difficult because this, this is in the way. So what I'm actually gonna do is bring that up and over like that. Magnetized screwdrivers rock. And it's actually the loosest one, it's the easiest to put in, would you believe? Okay, so now I want to go back around and secure all those again. Okay, so now the screen is secure. Uh, you might want to give it a right wipe down if you can find a clean rag anywhere. I uh, can't find a clean rag right now. Uh, so then we want to put this and this and these buttons back it together. There's one. And basically, that works with the four screws. Go into their corresponding holes and hold it down. And the buttons go on top. So, we're gonna put in some screws. Again, those will click over those stands and the PCB will fit onto the plastic piece. Okay, I'm gonna push that back down there so it's nice and tucked out of the way again. We've got some dials to put on. As you can see, these have a corresponding bit. So you just gotta support the back of the PCB and fit that bad boy. They're, they're quite tight, these ones. So they're on. Now, we did a stupid. <laughs> so don't secure the bottom of the thing first up because you'll have to undo it. So you'll need to get these two buttons. All right, so my other camera just died. That's really annoying. So you're going to have to put the buttons, these buttons, in their um, in their hole, and they are handed. So there's a little there's a little nook for it in there, and they go in like that. Probably recommend if you've done this and put the cover on first, just to sort of just lift it up and drop it in its hole. It'll just slide on in, hold that in place, turn it around, and rinse and repeat. Huh, is this one not handed? 
This one does not look handed. How interesting. So you'll have to actually pay attention to how you put that in. There you go. Alright, so now you want to screw the bottom of the PCB to the plastic. Okay, and the final thing that you want to do here is to put back on your rotary dial. And there you go, the face is back together. Buttons working, all that. Cool. So, from there, we have to put it into here. Now, I would advise you plug your things in before you do reassemble it. Otherwise, you're going to have, as they say, you're going to have a bad time. Also, these, you want to route your aerial back through at this point as well. So we'll stick that back on there. We honestly could screw that back in. We want to kind of pull that to the side. And uh, tuck it in there. That'll hold it for now. And now we'll put this just over to the side. And reconnect. Now handily, again, good on your engineers. Uh, this has, put it this way, steering and throttle on it. Which makes our life nice and easy. Just have to come along and line up your pins and your plug chuck it in and get the other one chuck it in alright cool steering throttle from there we've got the daughter board here and again just line up the pins on that careful not to drop everything And push it in. So now we're ready to do the final plug, which is this one, and bring it all home and then fit everything again. So now with this plug, I actually should point this out. This plug here has a weird setup. They've got some sort of weird setup. So there's a 2S plug down at the base here. And there's four double A's that go in here. And you can see there's a wiring harness off that. And a wiring harness off that. And they both come up. And then they share a common ground. But one side is the, um, I call it low voltage, from the batteries. And the other, from the double uh, A slots. And the other side is the 7.2 volts nominal from the uh, 2s um, so you want to make sure that this plug is the right way around that shouldn't be a problem because it's handed but i did want to cover that it's got that little weirdness about it anyway so let's get this all together so things start to get a bit finicky line up our pins and bring it home Sorry if it's a bad shot. Okay, so we have everything there now. Now we've got to bring it over. And finally, before we reconnect that UFL, which is going to be a heap of fun, we have to finagle our way to some sort of, you know, agreement with this device. And it's probably going to be easiest to try to do this all at once. Um, get this down in there, you can get the wires to stop playing funny buggers, so that's slotted in. And now we put a screw into the steering, you focused, <laughs> put a screw into the steering And just lightly clamp that so that we can get that button right back in its hole and slide this in 
And this literally like, it slides in here. It's a bit finicky and I need to drop the screwdriver and look at what I'm doing. So that top bit, this plate meshes in with the side of it and it just slots in like that. All right. So now come in, careful not to bash your board with your screwdriver, tighten that screw down and put in your other screws for your steering. Now, because you're gonna cover these up, I'd make sure you actually uh, check they're nice and tight before you put your throttle assembly in. Again, not like super tight because you're going metal into plastic, but yeah, tight. Now your motherboard, this daughter board here, it's a little finicky, I've gotta say. You have to fandangle that potentiometer pot in there, like that, so to speak and bring it to its home. Oh God, the whole thing fell apart. <laughs> Get back together, yo. Okay. So just for the uh, one of an easy life, I'm going to re-secure that with at least one screw at the moment. Okay, so that's in with one screw, just to hold it there. Now you want to take our uh, throttle assembly and uh, bring the wires, they tuck under there and reattach it. So this is a bit of a finicky one. You want to pull that UFL up, push that down. And before we lose anything, I'll just put one screw into that and reconnect the UFL. So now I want to reconnect this bad boy here, which is so much easier said than done. So you want to line that up, just line it up nice and carefully. Actually, let me get in here for a nice close shot. Okay, so that's probably not the best in the world, but line it up so that the UFL is going to be facing the right direction and just click it on. Don't force them, it should just be a nice easy click. Not easy easy, but easy enough. Okay, now I'm going to go through and put in this screw and this screw and this screw and these two for this. Um, and then I'll catch you then. Okie dokie, so here we are. We've put it back together. Before I put in, because I was a little cocky uh, doing all the screws up before uh, turning it on. Uh, before I put in the rubber stoppers, I will put some batteries in it and find out if it works. So. Where's number four? There you go. And there you go, you can see there is some ingress. You can see. So that, that's... Where's the backlight? Come here. So you can see just here, if I zoom in, there has been a flaw in my plan. I'm going to turn off this. Will this help? Yes. That will a bit. Maybe if I zoom in a bit more. Uh, the camera hates that. Come on. You can do it. You had it. You've got it. Okay, good, there you go, you can see that. So that is conformal coating that's gotten between the screen and the backlight. Now, I don't really mind about that, but I, I mean, that was a risk. And you know, when I was, this, this is to me was a bit of experiment because I've never done a screen before. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am unsure what's gonna happen with the screen. Um, and this is what's happened. However, it's still completely functional. The LCD part's not damaged at all. The backlight's not damaged at all. It's just between the two. It sort of wormed its way in. It must have broken the solvent between the two. So there's probably a better way to do that. And I'd love to hear from people down in the comments 
on what they have to say on that. Watch your eyes. So, uh, that's, the, that's that. Turn that back off. Put these rubber things back in and go for a spin. Um, on the noted batteries, uh, I've got to put the wheel back on, don't I? On the noted batteries, um, this won't fit a massive uh, 2S cell. Um, so it might be better to do uh, full uh, lithium ions or something and recharge them. Anywho, here's what it is. I'm going to use your batteries up first. Wait. Meh. <laughs> All right, we've got to put the wheel on. Test that out. That goes like that. I want this like this. Mm. I could do a tightening up, couldn't it? Really? I mean, you could buy better gimbals and put them in, but like, I wouldn't bother. Thank you, It doesn't give me all my range. It's close. Oh, well, we'll see how that works. And so, this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I want to go for a little spin, take the car out, have a little run up the tracks, go all the way up there, and uh, you know, it's about to rain. Um, here I am with the remote, so yeah, hopefully uh, all my good work has uh, been good work and not bad work, and it works at the end of it, if it rains. We'll see, but I don't really feel so constrained now. That's the point. Anyway, let's go for a spin. So if you're wondering if the little horn is any good, um, gets you almost all the way there. Like we like this, you can get all the way there, like that. Get most of it, as you can see. I think I'm just sort of pressed up against the dirt, and I can't turn my way. So a little, little more to the right, you can do anyway, and you can see how that feeds back, so that's a bit of a let down on the old spring there, maybe some, uh, let's make some modifications to that, uh, so it stiffens it up, might be a, a good idea if you're going to use a horn. Up. 
I need to get some more practice for this, Trigo. Oh, that was pretty shocking. Okay, and there she is. Uh, yeah, gone pretty well. Gone for about a month with it now, and it's uh, working perfectly fine. The screen's got that slight cosmetic defect from where the conformal coating got between the two layers. And of course, that uh, spring is, um, yeah, weak as a wet fish, um, a dead wet fish, recently dead, I guess, rig and mortis, whoops, bad, bad analogy that. Anyway, point is, works fine, and seems to be quite weatherproof. I'm not gonna be too worried, as you can see, it's kind of grey today, so if I go for a spin, I'm not going to be too worried if it rains on me. Um, that might make my work a week, weekend of work a bit hard, but yeah, another story. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and uh, tap the uh, notification bell so YouTube will let you know when I put out videos. Be well, fly safe, and I'll catch you next time. Row, 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 row. What are you doing, Jimmy Boo? White dogs, white dogs, bro, oh, buddy, oh mate, get your, oh my god, look what he just did to my trousers, <laughs> yeah, he's off playing.